Hey Lighthouse, I hope you guys are doing great, staying healthy and happy and safe during this crazy, bizarre quarantine time. And let me just express how much I literally miss you guys, like crazy. What a strange year this has all been so far. And I miss our Sunday nights like crazy, and hopefully you do too. And I just can't wait until we are back together again, which it might be around the summer where we can see each other and be each other and just rejoice all together again. Until then, this virtual thing is just gonna have to do. And I'm really excited to have these next couple of nights for our finishing and finale series called Belong virtually and you guys can meet and discuss with your small groups and I hope that it's very fruitful and I hope you guys enjoy it and I hope that this just reaches you in a point where maybe we could all use each other in a little bit more of a desperate way. <laughs> this is our final series which blows my mind but it's called Belong and I think that God has such a funny way of keeping us on our toes because at the very beginning of the year um, last, uh, let's say August-ish, I sat down with Trina, our middle school youth minister, and Father Paul, and we went over what the curriculum would look like this year. And as I had a whole bunch of different um, things to choose from and series to choose from, I went with Belong to end our year. Well, here we are, and God always keeps us on our toes because this series is called Belong. A life night on isolation. What? <laughs> and I already have my own kind of plan and action in my head. And then here we are, virtually alone together. And we are going to conquer this series called Belong. And going into being alone and where we're needed and how we thrive and everything like this. But still kind of on our own and together all at the same time. So... Let's just begin. Here we go. Belong, the first night alone. Isolation versus solitude. Alone. Being alone can kind of make us feel uncomfortable and some of us really just try to avoid it. However, everyone experiences being alone and no one is exempt. How we experience our aloneness though can differ because maybe we go into isolation and maybe we go into solitude. So let's break down those words really quick. Life Teen defines these words, isolation and solitude like this. If we think back, like way back, like all the way at the beginning back to when Adam was here, he was alone. But in his time here on earth, before Eve came, he wasn't isolated. He was in solitude. He grew, not only finding out more things about himself, but also just forming a deeper and more intense relationship with God. He knew he wasn't really alone, because he knew God was there. We could think of other stories of solitude, such as Moses when he receives the Ten Commandments, or maybe even Jonah while he's in the belly of a whale. During all these examples, yeah, they maybe were alone, but they never were isolated. They were in solitude, and they formed a more meaningful and deeper relationship with God during this time, along with growing deeper within themselves to find out maybe the purpose of what God had created them for to begin with. Maybe going deeper in prayer, just to find themselves and who they are in a more Christ-like way. They grow to trust and to learn and to understand their purpose more intensely. Jesus, who is a model of holiness, more often than not found himself going away to pray. During these hours of him praying, he was in solitary to consider his father's will. 
being in solitude is such an important part of our faith because we are not afraid to be alone. We take the time to learn more about our faith, learn more about our God and our purpose, just as Adam did in the beginning. But what happens when instead of being in solitude, you're in isolation? Isolation can be a very sticky and uncertain time for so many people. And it is a time due to the world around us that it makes us feel truly alone. We lose sight of Christ and even ourselves. It disconnects us from so many and can be pretty destructive. But I challenge you to think, maybe you were in a place of isolation. Maybe you are in a place of isolation. How did you get out? What changed? How did you push yourself to move from being isolated to moments of solitude? If you think that you're the only one who has ever felt truly alone, not even being able to recognize yourself, your friendships, and even God, know that you are not alone. Know many have been there, and yet here we are, surrounded by true authentic relationships with others and with Jesus. We strive to find a way out of our isolation and become who we were meant to be, who Christ created us to be. God invites us to know him, to spend time with him, and experience the depth of his love that goes beyond any flaw or failure we may think that we have. As we spend time with him, we discover ourselves and encounter other people in a real and meaningful way. Do not be afraid to discover who you are meant to be. In isolation, you find ways to disconnect and just completely avoid other people and who you are and who Christ is. Seek God during that time. Turn your isolation into solitude. Ask God and pray to him to show you a more clear version of yourself, to help you on the road you are currently on, and to be honest with him. Show yourself to him because he already knows who you are. So talk to him about it. Let him know how you are feeling. What is going through your mind? Challenge yourself to be stronger and fight harder for who you were meant to be instead of hiding from him and yourself. How do I do this? Well, look around. Even though we aren't physically at Lighthouse and Sexton Hall right now, look who you're with and watching this video with. You're with your small group, your community, and you're with your church. The church is here to help you form authentic relationships with people and to form a community of one together. It's somewhere where we can all go to take our masks off, show our true selves, and become vulnerable. We become honest, and we become an ever-growing movement of showing others Christ's love and inviting them to experience it themselves. Because we have each stood alone before God, we do not have to be isolated. We can be in solitude, knowing God, ourselves, and our authentic community. I wanna challenge you this week to seek God. Maybe you're getting to your breaking point for being home so long, but I encourage you to keep hope and keep peace and keep your faith. Trust in God during this time. Seek him during this time. Maybe you're in a point where you do feel alone and maybe you're just on that brink of isolation and solitude. Seek solitude in our God and in our faith. Just be with him this week. Find some time to maybe say a rosary. Um, maybe you go in your room and you put on some worship music and you just listen and whatever comes to your mind, that becomes your prayer. Another way to seek him during your time of solitude is something called Alexio Divina. And if you've never heard of what this is, 
it's really a very intimate and beautiful experience of finding what God is trying to tell you through the scriptures. So maybe after this message, you break up with your small groups and you guys do Alexio Divina together. Look at the passage of Sunday's readings, whether it be um, the first or second reading, the Psalm or the gospel. Pray about it and prepare for just a little bit. Make it a simple prayer. God, let me hear you. And then just be for just a few minutes. Move on from that step to actually reading the verse. When you read it through, maybe a couple words stick out to you. So highlight them, write them down, keep track of what they are, and then read it again. Once you've read it again and you have your little points of maybe the words that stuck out or the phrases that stuck out, meditate on them. And maybe it's helpful for everybody to share one thing that stood out. Once you've discussed a little bit, and maybe it's just in the silence of your heart, what he was speaking to you, end with simply contemplating. Just listen. See what God is trying to tell you. See what he is speaking to you through this message. Let God just be with you. And maybe if your mind starts to wander, bring in that little prayer. Lord, what are you trying to teach me? What are you telling me? What do I need to hear? See what God is saying to you and just be. Now this might sound intimidating, but don't worry. This is such a beautiful, beautiful experience to have and a beautiful time to have with our Lord that I really do encourage you to do this, whether it is with your small groups or perhaps it's just on your own sometime throughout the week. Encourage others to grow. We are a community built on the strongest common denominator and that's Jesus and our belief in our faith in him. Do not be afraid. Let yourself be alone with God in solitude rather than alone by yourself and in fear and isolation. Know that if you do enter a time of isolation, we're here for you. Your community is here for you. Your God is here for you. And you are never alone. So before we break into our groups, I would love to end with just a quick prayer. So if we could all bow our heads, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Jesus, I know that in a time of uncertainty, it is easy for me to fall into the trap of feeling completely alone. But you never leave me. Let me remember that. Let me see you in random acts throughout the day. Let me seek you in this time of alone together. And never let me stray from who I am and who you have created me to be. Thank you for everything you give us and for all the intentions that we now share in the silence of our hearts. For these and those unspoken, we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I hope you guys have a beautiful rest of your Sunday and a great week, and have a great time with your small groups. I miss you. Bye.